Yeah, what's going on? Looks like a lot of people enjoyed the must-have books for those who read. And uh, as usual, someone recommended some books for me, including that Dope Inc. And I do have to get the Carl Evans uh, book on Elijah Muhammad. I got to hunt that down. Because he might be able to tell us. His Judas factor told a whole lot of extra details, so he might be able to tell us something extra about Elijah Muhammad that we don't know. But the dope ink piqued my curiosity. By the time this one goes up, the third part of the book uh, must have series, I guess. You'll see that I mentioned that the British could have you can't rule them out when it comes to that JFK assassination. And part of the reason is because, as you know, the British have a problem with the Irish. After all, they took the Irish land. And the Irish aren't what people think they are, redhead white people. They say most of the Irish are dark-haired. And, of course, we know that black people used to run Ireland. And uh, even the Irish get keloids which only darker skinned people get keloids, you know? <clears throat> and many Irish people have frizzy hair, even if it comes in red. They can have bright blue or bright green eyes, crystal green eyes, red hair, but frizzy hair. You already know what that's all about. There's no getting around it. So that could be one of the factors that JFK had to, be go had to go and was uh, marked for death. Can't forget about the Irish, the Catholic part component. Also, people say that guns that were hidden, there was an English rifle, I forgot the name of the rifle, that they said was found on the scene. So that's very telling. As we know, the British intelligence and the u.s intelligence they usually join forces to pull shenanigans off you know jimmy hendrix got killed in the uk you know and when you think about it he's known as the greatest guitarist of all time still 50 years after he's dead if he would have lived even longer god damn i mean you know they like to stop us whenever the best stick around. I, I even found out that Prince's half-brother who inherited a lot of his estate died. But, you know, whenever intellectual properties and money, mainly the assets. Believe it or not, I keep telling people it's about the assets, not the money. People who own the banks, they already have all the money they, that they need. The goal is to take the assets because they don't want you having. That's what they take. They take assets. You take the money. They don't need the money. They want your assets because the assets, that's power. That's like land. If you're a land owner, you can have a, you could be a business owner. But if you don't own the land, suppose there's oil found on the land. The renter can't get, get paid, but the, the land owner can get paid. That's why they set up this system where they trick you into thinking that you own land. As long as you have to keep, you're forced to pay people. You don't own a damn thing. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to keep paying somebody something, some money on something I own. The hell kind of sense does that make? No sense. So <clears throat> the British being involved in JFK assassination, that doesn't surprise me at all. We already know the mob was, and one of these days I might detail that, but I do stress the Harvey and Lee book. And if you can't get the book, the website is very intriguing. And even though it, the website details a whole lot to the point that some people might say, well, I guess I don't have to worry about getting the book. Trust me, that book is a thousand pages. And that book, <clears throat> if you know about stuff, that's a great book. 
And it starts off at the beginning. He does go where John Armstrong, he goes where, does go where no people, well, few people have dared to go. But he goes in detail and he provides the evidence, back and forth evidence. You do have to kind of keep up in your mind. As far as the Oswald, little baby movements and all that kind of stuff. And how they merge the two personalities together, identities together. And that's not, it seems stupid, but that's part of the reason why they'll never reveal what they did. Because it's too intricate a plan. And now we're talking about the 19, what, 30s, 40s? Even if we get into 2040, we're almost 100 years. They'll never reveal that shit. Because, and even if they did, people say, man, that's too crazy. Which is why they do what they do. Because people say, man, that's too crazy to be real. You know? The truth is stranger than fiction. And a lot of the fiction comes from truth. (laughs) (coughs) Excuse me. But... That's for the books. I don't want to get back into that. I want to get into the main thing. Which is the hair. But before I get into the hair. I heard Garfield. I listened to his cockamamie show. But, you know, he's always saying, I'm out of here. I ain't got nothing else to do. I'm out of here. Then he stays on for another five, six, seven, eight hours. I mean, come on. You know, it's insane. But the one thing that piqued my interest that I happened to have uh, caught on a soundbite was that he said that he does not believe that black people started every civilization on pl- on the planet. Now, that's the same thing. If you find my uh, video I did with Renoko Rashidi, you'll find that's the same thing that he did. Uh, He said. And I had to take him to task on that. And it goes back to the simple uh, fact of the matter is if you don't think that black people started every civilization but you do think and believe that black people were first in every country, then the two can't go together. Like I said to Renoko Rashidi, I said, well, you must assume that the white man must have been superior from birth then. If you don't think that black people started every civilization first, if they were there first, what'd they do? Wait for the white man to arrive thousands of years later? Doesn't make sense. This is how you could tell these people are coon agents. And I also question Renoko Rashidi in his always uh, photographing savage black people who are half naked and broke with the biggest lips and biggest noses all around the world. Those are the only ones he say these are our African people. I'm like, shit, man, there's nobody else. What about these other East Indians? I mean, come on. See, he has his very, very narrow uh, idea of what a black or so-called Africoid is supposed to be looking like. And that idea comes from the white man. Tell me I'm lying. That comes from the white man. You can't deny that. Because that's what the white man said. A black person is supposed to look like big lips, full nose only. First, he said dark skin, but then he started changing the skin tone around, said whatever. Now, when a man says that somebody who could be is half black, half white is black. And acts like the white part is not there. You can't believe a damn thing they say. But in Europe. The mixed people. They used to stratify them and and segregate them all but then they realized god damn it we're alienating too many people 
So the Jimmy Garoppolo's of the world. Let's just call them white, even though we see with our own eyes, they don't really, they're not visually white. But we'll call them white. He has some white characteristics. And you look at Jimmy Garoppolo's nose, if you think I'm lying, and his skin tone and his dark hair, like I told you before. Anybody with dark hair, they're not white. That means they're mixed. So this is what they do. Excuse me. They'll uh, just call the mixed Caucasoid, Caucasian. And that's where this Renoko Rashidi came from with this Africoid BS. But see, these house niggas, these coons, these niggas for the white man, they keep trying to center everything around Africa. These these are Afrocentrics. I'm not an Afrocentric. I'm just, you, you know, I, I hate to say pro-black because now people are trying to taint that and the coon agents are the ones who are tainting it. You know, now you got to choose a damn new title. You know, every time something comes around, they try to demonize it. You know, and some people call Nation of Islam people pro-blacks and they're not pro-blacks. Those are house niggas. There ain't no doubt about that. I already proved that, so there's no need to go over that again. But I'm not black, I'm not African centered. And the reason why that is, is because number one, Africans are a bunch of idiots. That's that's number one. <laughs> I mean, there's no way around that. Number two, uh they're black people in places other than Africa. And I don't like East Indians getting off the damn hook. That was something that always irked me growing up. White people would act funny towards me and my sister, but yet, you know, say, oh, this pool is closed. At the time, I didn't realize the East Indians owned the damn uh, motel. Though. The pool is closed. And then I see these black ass East Indians in the pool coming in after us. And I'm like, man, what the fuck? Thought the pool was closed. And then I have to start reevaluating things. And this is a good segue into the main event. So I started asking myself, if black people are the problem, how come the white man doesn't seem to have a problem with these goddamn East Indians? How come these East Indians live in the same hood as the white man? And you never hear of any racial issues. If they are, the East Indians are not really talking about it because they don't want any problems because they know they're in a nice, comfortable position basically able to maneuver and do as they please in the white man within the white man's society and the same thing in South Africa, but they don't have to catch the hell, you know, we catch the hell, you know? And again, this is why I say we have to get rid of our associations with these goddamn Caribbeans too, because those are the agents up close and personal to us. You got to get rid of them. But, with the Garfield, a coon agent Jamaican, the Renoka Rashidi, a coon agent professor. What they say is that the black man, they don't believe that the black man started any civilization. So if that's the case, or I'm sorry, let me clarify, started all civilizations. If that's the case, now, first of all, when black people make the claim that black people started all civilizations. That means started all civilizations to people who were native to the land, not as opposed to some white man coming through. For instance, the British taking over the Americas, North America coming in, setting up shop. Of course, the black man didn't start that civilization, at least over here. So that's a, that's not what we're talking about or those people are talking about. But these coons try to uh, confuse the issue on purpose because they are working for the white man. So, again, if you say that the black man is the original man native to every land on Earth. Then naturally, that man would have to start civilization because the opposite of that is you're saying that the white man had to start everything. If the black man didn't, and he was here first, 
that, you can't argue. See, this is how you back these people into a corner. They can't argue that. Because if they argue that, now they're advocating for white supremacy and white superiority, which means any pro-African bullshit they're talking is verified bullshit. So, again, you can't get out of that. The languages tell part of the story. The deities tell another part of the story. The migrations tell another part of the story. Racial mixture tells another part of the story. But like I said, when it comes to racial mixture, races, DNA classifications, the white man is the one classifying everything and labeling everything. And that's what these coons who claim that they're so knowledgeable go off of. This is why I dismiss certain categories because I know it used to be something else. This is why when I talk Italians, so-called Arabs and other people, you're getting into different people. It's just like those two Oswalds I was telling you about, the way they merge the identities together. So now that you start looking at the fake one as the real one, same thing with the so-called Arab. The real Arab was black. Then the Turks come in because they're Muslims. You, the white man starts merging the two together until you start thinking and looking at the white Turk as the Arab, because that's what they call themselves now. Because it's not to their advantage to call themselves the Turk, especially since there's a country called Turkey now. At the peak of the Ottoman Empire, or even at the end of it, there was no country called Turkey. <laughs> that's what people had to understand. There was no country called Turkey. That came after the Ottoman Empire was done in its official capacity. So now a lot of people, and I argued this with people, even uh, Sir Ross Sutton said he's uncle, Pianchi, who tried to say, try to play stupid. Try to act like the, because uh, I, I schooled him on it and then he still went back to it. When, they, when you school him on it, and they can verify the information, they still stick to what they stick to. Watch out for those kind of people. I said, Turks don't come from Turkey. I mean, that's plain and simple. Turks are from nowhere around the Mediterranean. They're from nowhere. From Western Asia. They're not from anywhere in Western Asia. But people associate the modern country of Turkey with Turks. But the truth is, the odd people, the Turks of the Ottoman Empire, never left. They just rebranded themselves as Arabs. And after a while, I'm gonna get to. I know I've been bullshitting, but I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get to it. Believe me, I'm gonna get to the video. But that's a, a case of the white man rebranding other people. And if you two weren't were not the way it was, I would show you the scene from Lawrence of Arabia. And then you can understand why they put that in there. You know? So, the white man labels things to, to whatever fits his agenda at the time. Just like right now, he's relabeling homosexuals and trannies as a great thing to aspire to become. You know, you get a parade if you're a goddamn tranny. You know, and then if somebody hurts your goddamn feelings over it, everybody else is a villain. This is how they do it. That's why when it comes to that Malik Yoba bullshit, keep in mind he's an actor. That's what you got to always keep in mind. These people are actors, entertainers. So they're acting. They're on the job. Every time a mic and a camera is in front of their faces, they're on the job. Same thing with a politician. You know they're full of shit, the politician, every time a mic or cameras in front of their faces, you know you're getting bullshit smiles, bullshit answers. You're never getting anything honest out of these people. Same thing with these actors. They're on the job. So, you know, who knows if the man is gay or not, but he's acting. Let's put it that way. So I say all that to come into the segue of, I had a thought. Because I noticed that 
there seem to be two general societies in this country. And really the world. And white power plays a big part in the psychology of black people. Because I notice when I'm in suburbs, rich white areas. Within New York City. With outside of New York City. I notice a few things. I've noticed that there's no racism that is apparent in these white hoods and these rich white middle class, upper middle class, high class uh, white communities. Because I noticed that the Asian, they're in these communities mainly the Japanese, then the Chinese, and the Korean. A lot of the other Southeast Asian types, Cambodians, Vietnamese, they may, they're not in the higher class, but they're in other white hoods. You don't see them in the black man's communities or neighborhoods. The East Indian, as black as they come, you don't see them living in the hood. Do you? Of course not. They're in the white man's hoods. Now, then you got the other society. The same thing with the so-called Arabs. They're in the white man's hoods. And sometimes they'll have kids with white people. And the white people will make excuses. Now, with that, uh, on the flip side, the hood. Refugee camps for black Americans and other undesirable non-whites that uh, come into the country, namely Spanish speaking individuals. These are the ones who get pushed into the hood. And this is an exception to the main topic, which is about the hair. And my point is that if you notice in these white communities, the peoples with the straight hair live with the white people. The only ones that have straight hair that live with the black people are the ones who are already mixed. Not to say that some of those other people aren't mixed already. But the hair comes straight. It is what it is. The only ones that aren't are the ones that are the mulattoes or black Americans or Caribbean who are in white communities. But a lot of them, you see, they try to make them blend in as much as possible, especially if they come out with that brown hair, blonde hair. Then they blend in. They end up dating white boys. And they lost. They just end up as people looking like white people with a so-called tan. And there's no such thing as a dark-skinned white person. You're either white or you're not. You know? So, some of these Latinos, so-called Latinos, they have straight hair. For, for various reasons. Largely due to race mixing. You know, that's why I go some places. Sometimes I see tons of them. And their hair is getting softer, not necessarily straight, straight, but in the area. But they'll still look black otherwise. And I think this is what they want. They want to get rid of the, I don't want to say African traits, because Garfield and them, they would say African traits. But let's just say unmixed black traits let's put it that way because there are other people around the world with afros and kinky hair they want to get rid of anything that the white man has deemed undesirable and those are thick lips even though they're desirable when he wants them afro they're undesirable when we have it but when he tries to get it Look at the uh, videos from the 1970s. You'll see people, white people rocking afros. Namely, my man John Henley from the Eagles. 
rocking the afro. See, when they do it, it's cool. When we do it, it should be damned. Big lips on us. You see all the caricatures they made of us over the, the last 150, 200 years. Bad. They did it to East Indians, by the way. I keep telling people that Sambo, every time I mention that Sambo is East Indian. I notice people get quiet. And they never really want me to expound on that. And the reason why is because it proves my point that East Indians are black. Your eyes should tell you this shit any goddamn way. And it proves that the British once saw them as jigaboos. But the East Indian being a coward, or you can call it strategic, they would argue with the white man that they're not like the other black people. The only reason why they even started arguing that is because the white man and his racism started treating them a little different, mainly because of the hair. If they had Afros, then they couldn't even argue their way out of the shit. Truth be told. That's why they try not to have relations with us. But, of course, in the Caribbean, you know, it's a different story, even though they still had conflicts, but they will engage in, I, I can't call it mixing, just relationships with uh, African-style black people. So, again, there's a correlation between the white man with straight hair and accepting everybody else. And I'm starting to think maybe that's what this whole thing is about globally. Because I notice a lot of black people, women in particular, the way they style their hair and the wigs that they uh, wear. I think they feel the pressure to think that damn, these people can't know how to back out of a driveway. I think they feel the pressure to uh, feel that their hair must be straight since it appears that most of the world, mainly backed up by Asians, have straight hair. So people start feeling like, damn, my hair must be abnormal, must not be the real deal. It must be wrong. And a lot of black people feel that way, especially when they see East black ass East Indians. They're like, damn, their hair is straight, but see, you don't realize they're mixed. I mean, that's <laughs> once you understand all this, then you can better understand what the hell is going on. And like I said before, there are Indians with frizzy hair in India. I've seen them in this country with frizzy hair and no i'm not talking about those packy uh i forgot what the hell the name of that group was in pakistan not talking about them but again that, that's a good example too you got african style people in pakistan that they don't tell you about but they like to say everybody's from africa and that's why you got your pan africans backing up the white man and it's supposed to sound truthful coming from these Uncle Tom house niggers, these Caribbeans. You can't tell me the correlation between Afrocentricity and goddamn Caribbeans is not real. You can't tell me that. It's more than real. So, straight hair, that could have been the battle throughout the ages. Because you see in every society throughout the world, it started out black. Foundations of all civilizations started out black with kinky or woolly hair. Then they all get invaded by people with straight hair. But for some reason, the white man seems to hide, even the Asian man seems to hide who the straight haired people were. Especially the mongol style asian they they seem to hide that but you see the so-called african style facial features on these people so where did the straight hair come from mixing of course they say that there's neanderthal in the mongol and the white man maybe that's it and there's race mixing going on uh within that but it seems as if the white man 
prefers the straight hair. But at the same time, he tries to be cool with everything that we do. Now, remember, if you can recall, you may not recall, but when I first started trying to go live, I played a scene from Eyes on the Prize. Yeah, they flagged that down, too. That's why I can't even put nothing up. It's just crazy. But they show one scene that like it's from the late 50s. And, you know, I always wonder where these others were during the uh, 50s and 60s civil rights, civil rights era. Because nobody was marching with us, I know that. Except agent Caribbeans, but they were agents. So I kept asking myself, where were, where were the Hispanics at? I know they were in this country, but apparently they were down with the white man. Except for the, obviously, the blacker looking ones. Because there was a, a Hispanic, you know, some people may be hard to tell because it was in black and white. When you see it quickly and you think, okay, back in the 50s, it was black against white. So that means that nobody else should be involved with the white man during that time. But I keep telling people these goddamn Hispanics, they want to be white. They believe themselves to be white. They train them their minds to be white. But the white man says... Not so fast. That's why he puts you in the hood. If he thought that you were white, wanted you to be white, you'd be in his hood. Where he puts you at is what he thinks of you. But anyway, the white lady, the white girl was saying she can tolerate so-called Latinos, the other coloreds. And she said, I think it's because of the hair. The hair is different. That's a stupid reason to hate somebody, of course. Uh, well, your hair is different. They want us to love some trannies, but your hair is different. So, yeah, I guess I'll hate you to the point that I need to kill. It's funny how these others, they didn't raise any stink during the civil rights era because they didn't want any problems. That's why. And I keep telling you the reason why the East Indian doesn't side with us is because they don't have to. They're in a good position. They don't want to be picked on. So that's why they stay back and stay out of the way. Sometimes they might join in with the white man and start some shit, talk some shit. That's why I remember I tell you when I was on this job, this Indian was saying, uh, when I say, oh, man, I'm, you know, do my thing with computers. He's like telling me something about some Steve Harvey, oh, Hardy, hard, hard. I don't think of you as that. And then he's like, when it comes to you, I don't think of you as computers. He's trying to set it up as some joke that I was supposed to laugh at. And I said, you know, it's funny. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I like the joke. So I said, let me latch on to his joke and insult this black ass bastard. That's what I said. So I said, it's funny. When I think about you, I don't think of you as an American citizen. <laughs> you know, don't let these fuckers insult you. If an East Indian, if you're lighter than they are, call them the usual names that we get called. That'll put them in their places real fast. Call him a spear chucker, a jungle bunny, a coon, a nigger, and a black bastard. <laughs> They'll get humbled quickly because they can't say, oh, well, I'm not black. They can't say that to you. They may be thinking it, but they can't say it. <laughs> and they are the jungle bunnies because, like I said, the white man has fucked your mind up. He makes you think that Africa has jungles. Africa does not have jungles. Africa has forests. India has jungles. They always say the lion is the king of the jungle. Well, I have news for you. In Africa, lions don't roam in a jungle. These are more lies the white man puts out. Because they start one lie, so they got to somehow continue the whole shit. Lions don't roam in a jungle in Africa. They run on the open savanna, open plains. 
You know? <laughs> and they run in the fucking desert. In the Kalahari. So this is why you gotta use your brain. Because if you just follow the white man only in his coons, who are from the Caribbean, you will be lost. So it looks like straight hair is the, is the whole thing that's going on. It looks like that was the war. That's why I say when it comes to color, skin color, the white man doesn't seem to mind too much. Skin color, that's just, you know, something that's a visual identifier. But as long as he's in control, it's fine. And I think as long as they can change over the hair from kinky to straight, that's that seems to be a strategy to finally erase all the originals memory. And a lot of the black people like to go along with that because they're like, damn, if I can get rid of the hair, that's one less thing that black people, that white people have to put me down or to marginalize me with. But some of these same people will say, well, try being dark skin and see how you like it. But yet, I always see the dark-skinned black people are always the most successful. So, it's crazy. It's crazy. Now, when it comes to white women wanting black men, notice how they always want the darkest one. Right now, I'm looking at a, a mixed girl and her mother. She looks kind of Puerto Rican, but that hair gives it away. Then she has her child, which is blonde. So she must have had a child with a white man. That's what happens, man. It's socially, you're kind of forced to, to mix if you're weak. But this is why I keep attacking the Caribbean because they are the coon agents set right beside us to help confuse and manipulate us. These are agents on the ground. And we need to isolate ourselves. This is why people like Garfield can't stand these people. This is why they don't want to engage in an actual dialogue because they know their whole shit will be put to rest. Let's see what time it is. Okay. <clears throat> so their whole shit will be put to rest. But again, these are the two societies I'm looking at. I'm looking at straight haired the societies that live with the white man and his nice neighborhoods are from countries where the people have straight hair the people are well off financially they're nuclear armed and they have influence on the world stage some way somehow and Indians are good at business and science and technology even though they say they don't seem to say much but for some odd reason, they get what they get. So that's what I've noticed. And the, the, the ones that come from countries that are less developed, less well off, like the Cambodias, the Vietnams, they're not high on the priority list unless it's time for war, you know? But it appears that it's about the hair game. Now, obviously, there are exceptions to the rule as Africans will live in the white man's society. In the white man's hoods. And like I said before in another video, some Africans will uh, live in our hoods until they come up. Then they move right into the white man's hoods. That's the way it is. And there are a lot of Africans out there with hair you know like a Russell Wilson but you when you see him in society you may not think okay that's an African you may think that's an Indian or something else that doesn't want to be down with you you know it, it just happens to work out that way but I'm going to close this out this and I'm going to close it out as I began. The evidence, again, is pretty cut, clear cut that the black man was everywhere first with nappy hair. Then race mixing came. 
But a lot of the nappy hair is still around. Though. That's the thing. It's just that every country, Asian, Mongol style Asians reproduce quickly. Just like these Hispanics, these uh, Mexicans. If you notice, I mean, I said it before a million times. Every time you see these Mexican women, I'm not talking about on the south in the southwest either. I'm talking about north, east, northern U.S. Now you got to say the south too. You always see them with kids, and more on the way. Reproduction. They do that well. They're here for slave labor. And if we don't get reparations, because it looks like they're putting them in as a low class to replace us, so it seems as if we should get reparations as we move up. But are they really going to let us move up in a lot of the classless black people? Are they really going to let us move up like that? Get money, move into their hoods. East Indians that try to flee or try to rip us off. I don't want to get into that topic because that's going to be redundant. Um, but I think what we need to do is we need to prepare for the future. And a lot of us prepare, prepare, prepare for it by uh, just choosing to get a white woman or a white man and say, fuck it. I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to let my future be white, just like Eartha Kitt. Grace Jones, all these other people mixed with the white man figured, well, he's in control. Fuck it. You know, they'll, they'll better accept me if they see that I have a white woman or a white man on my arm, especially the white man, you know, because I see a lot of these black women, they get the white man. And I, like I always say, just like it's mainly the dark skinned black man with the white woman. It's almost always the dark skin or the African or the Caribbean black woman with the white man because they want to get rid of the traits that the white man claims he hates the most but yet they seem to be the traits that he's always attracted to the most it's a power play it's a power struggle it's manipulation and this is why the so-called Latino and I'm not talking about of the Mexican type. I'm talking about of the black mulatto type Caribbean style. This is why they do what they do. And they try to mix either with other mulattoes like themselves or the white man. Because that is what they're all about. They want to uh, wipe away any anything that the white man says I don't like. Once you do that, you no longer have an identity. That's why these so-called Latinos, all they have to go on now is, La is Latino. So I'm trying to say, well, we're from Spain. Uh, trying to imply white. But the white man doesn't even recognize them as white. So, again, we, we have to put our priorities in order. And uh, these are things to think about. So with that, I'm out.